Hi kids, Miss Block here, and today we are going to continue looking at surface processes. In this particular lesson, we are going to define what erosion and deposition are, and we're going to look at the factors that influence deposition rates. As always, while watching this video, you should have your notes, earth science reference tables, and something to write with handy. In addition, feel free to pause, rewind, or rewatch this video in the event that there are concepts or things that I say that you might not understand or want to review or refresh. If you're ready, let's get started. So before, we talked about what weathering was. And if you recall, weathering was the breaking down of larger rocks into smaller rocks and fragments, known as sediments. However, after we've broken down these rocks or weathered these rocks, what do we do with them? They usually don't stay in the same place. After all, if you recall, the most common types of sediments and soils in New York State are transported soils. So to be transported, they need to go through erosion. Erosion is the transportation of weathered sediments from one location to another. So if we take a look in this picture right here, we can see one location over two separate days. It is the same location, we can tell because this yellow arrow in the top picture and bottom picture are pointing to the same house. But you will notice that there's a drastic difference between these two. Not only were these pictures taken on two separate days, May 21st, 2009 and November 5th, 2012, but you'll notice that the beach in both of these look very different. Here, on the picture on the top, we have this nice wide beach. In this picture on the bottom, we have this very narrow beach. What happened to the sand? What happened to the beach? The beach and the sand weren't weathered. True, probably some of it was, but this sand was transported elsewhere, which made this very skinny, narrow beach through the process of erosion. Also, if you look, this date is post-Sandy. This date is prior. So during Hurricane Sandy, we can see that the beach was severely eroded away due to various agents of erosion. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. So, these sediments won't be carried forever through erosion. They're going to be dropped off. We call this process deposition. Deposition is the dropping off or depositing or the settling of weathered and eroded sediments. Now, there are several factors that can influence the deposition rate or the settling rate of our sediments. There are four specific factors that you need to know. The first factor we're going to look at is the velocity of the transporting medium. Now there are different agents of erosion or types of erosion, such as running water, gravity, wind, or moving ice. And the speed at which these agents of erosions move can determine how much they can carry and how long they can carry it in their medium and how fast or slow these items will be deposited. The faster that these agents are moving, the less likely that we're going to deposit these sediments. I'm a big believer that a picture is worth a thousand words, so let's see how we can determine this or display this graphically. So if we were to put velocity along the bottom of our graph as our independent or manipulated variable, and put settling rate, or the speed at which it's deposited, along the y-axis as our dependent or responding variable, we can start to figure this out. I'm also a big believer that we should label our axes with some hints to help us figure things out. So, I put right here slow to indicate that these things here would take a long time. They're not going to move very fast if you have it down here. And up here, things are moving very quickly. I can also do the same here. Slow velocity, so our medium is moving very slow, or our medium is moving very quickly. So this would end up being an inverse relationship. 
This means that the velocity is very slow. This is going to be deposited very quickly. It's not going to be held in that solution. Likewise, if the velocity is very fast, we'll have these things deposited very slowly. They won't deposit or settle at all. They'll be continued to be carried in that solution. This is also supported by our graph that is on page six of our reference table. You can see that our stream velocity, as our stream velocity increases, the size of the particles that it can carry increases. So the stream is moving very quickly. It can really carry those boulders and cobbles. If the stream is moving really slow, it's only going to be able to carry smaller particles, such as clay and silt. So if it moves fast, it can carry clay, silt, sand, pebbles, cobbles, and boulders. But if it's moving very slow, maybe only clay, maybe clay and silt. Another factor that influences deposition or settling rate would be the particle size. Larger particles will settle more quickly than smaller particles. So let's see how we can express this on a graph. Particle size will go on the x-axis. That will be my manipulated or independent variable. And settling rate will go on the y-axis as my responding or dependent variable. I always like to put a little bit of labels in there to help me understand it better. So right here, things at the bottom, it's going to move slower. It's not going to have that great of velocity or speed. Well, things at the top will move quickly. I also put along here, I would find my smaller particles closer to the origin here and my larger particles over here farther away from the origin. So as I think about it, so if a small particle, would that settle fast or slow? That's going to probably settle pretty slow. And a big particle is going to settle very quickly. So I would end up having this direct relationship. I can also take a look here and draw in these particles. So this little tiny particle is going to take, not going to move as quickly as this large particle. Realize everything else about them will be uniform. So they would have the same composition, same amount of roundness, same density. Everything else would be the same. All of the factors equal. Now let's take a look in regards to settling time. Now rate is different than time, so make sure when you see a graph like this that you're filling it in or responding to the question appropriately. Time is how long something takes. So when we label this, you would maybe say a short amount of time versus a long amount of time. So you're not going to have a direct relationship again. Instead, you would have this inverse relationship. All right, again, small to big along the bottom, that hasn't changed, but since my y-axis changed, I'm going to have this short and long. And you can see how, with these um, sediments put right here, how it's going to appear different. Another factor that influences settling rate or deposition is particle shape. Now the shape of the particle we're looking at, is it flat or round? The more rounded the particle is, the more quickly it will settle. It will have a greater settling rate. It will deposit that much more quickly than, say, a flat particle. So let's see how that would look graphically represented. So right here along the bottom, I'm going from flat to round. Make sure you look and check that out. Sometimes it might go round to flat. So it's very important that you look at the x-axis at your manipulated variable and how the axis is set up. You would also want to make sure if you were constructing this, what you wrote along the bottom. So you'd want to be very specific and careful with that. We also have our settling rate here. So you'd want to think about, remember, slow versus fast. And if we fill this in, you'll see it is another direct relationship. This flat particle is not going to settle as quickly as a round particle, which would be more streamlined as it's going through your trans the medium. All right, and right here you could see this is what the flat particle, it's going to take more time than, say, my round particle right here. Let's see how this would look versus settling time. So again, time is different than rate. Think of rate as a speed 
time is how long something would take. So which one's going to take longer time to reach the bottom? The flat particle versus the round one. So as a result, that would be an inverse relationship. Our last factor that influences settling rates or deposition is particle density. Remember, density all the way back in the prologue, how much matter is in a given space, all right? How much stuff is in there? So the more stuff you have compacted in there, the denser it's going to be. So again, we set up our graph, particle density versus settling rate. A denser particle is going to settle or be deposited much more quickly than a lighter sediment. So as a result, we'll have another direct relationship. We want to examine this for time. So we're now going to be looking at how long it takes to reach the bottom as opposed to how fast based on the density. And that would be an inverse relationship. Okay. That's all about the four factors. Make sure you look in your notes to review also the patterns of deposition. Make sure you go and you review sorted, so how sediments can be sorted or unsorted, and the three patterns of deposition in there, especially vertical sorting and horizontal sorting. Those two are very important. You can always rewind and review this video. I hope you found it helpful. Take care. See you next show. Bye-bye.